Well, to discuss Director James Comey's testimony, we've got uh, Tyson Barker with us, uh, former director, of course, I should say, former FBI director James Comey. Uh, Tyson, uh, from the Aspen Institute, a director yourself there, and, uh, and of course, a fellow. Um, Tyson, let's start with the testimony itself from James Comey in front of the, how, from the Senate Intelligence Committee. What do you consider to be the most explosive, explosive parts of that testimony? Well, the truth is that we didn't get any new factual information. What we have is the forensics in a much more detailed and uh, kind of refined layout and the sequencing of events. The I would say the most explosive aspect was the implication on intent. Uh, basically, Comey said, uh, although he didn't use the word obstruction of justice, he definitely pointed in that direction. He said that by virtue of his office, the president was basically trying to compel him to end the investigation into Mike Flynn, and that was considered inappropriate. He he had done so by asking the others to step out of the room, by having this in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, basically creating the kind of contextualization that the Senate needs to make a determination on whether or not this is obstruction of justice. But the arrows that he let out point in that direction. Will the Senate then make this determination about whether there was an obstruction of justice? Will could this lead to President Trump himself being investigated? Well, I mean, you heard uh, President Trump's private lawyer basically questioning the credibility, in fact, the factuality of what was said in the, in the statement, and we do have a case of he said, he said. What we'll see both in the Senate and with the special prosecutor now is to try to make, to corroborate the facts on both sides, and corroborate the facts and determine intent. What was the president's intent in making these statements? And for that to happen, the next steps are basically going to be to ask those around Comey and President Trump, including Jeff Sessions, including uh, acting director McCall in the FBI and uh, Rod Rosenstein. Okay, now uh, we just heard in, in our report there the president's lawyer saying that Trump uh, never directly suggested that, uh, that, uh, that Trump never directly suggested th that, that Comey let go of the investigation or let go into, into the whole uh, investigation that he was following up regarding the ties to Russia. Is that enough of a defense to protect President Trump? I mean, you know, they are cherry picking from the testimony what they feel strengthens their case. But as has been noted by many people, it's a question of intent. The obstruction of justice is not necessarily the wording. It's the, it's the actual intent and the power dynamic and the contextualization. And there's a lot of information coming out, not only in this testimony, which is basically consolidates under oath a lot of information that we already had, but also the president's subsequent statements, which have been pretty... Um, uh, given robust evidence that there there is something here to investigate. Now, top Republican leaders haven't exactly come out fighting to defend uh, the uh, Comey or even the president to some degree. Speaker Paul Ryan says Comey's testimony is explained by the fact that the president is still learning how government works. Let's listen in. He's new at government, and so therefore I think that he... Uh, He's learning as he goes, and he's – you now know why he's frustrated, because he was told nothing wrong here, and he wants to get things done for the American people. He wants to deliver on these reforms. Is that any kind of defense? The president is learning how government works? I mean, uh, they are – the Republicans, one thing that you can say is they are circling the wagons. They are still trying to protect the White House. The president still has, as a political matter, approval ratings around – in the general public, around 35 percent, but within the Republican base, around 70, 75 percent. So they are directly responding to their constituents who are supporting President Trump. Uh, they also have an agenda that they want to get through, of course, on tax reform, health care reform, the Supreme Court justice that they've appointed. So they do have a bargain with this White House that they do want to protect him so they can get their agenda through as well. Okay, we also know, of course, about Trump's famous tweet uh, saying that Comey had better hope that there are no tapes that uh, of their conversations, apparently, implying maybe there are tapes. Uh, we heard the Democrats during the hearings uh, coming out and saying that the president should release those tapes if there are any. Let's, uh, let's hear what the, uh, what the Senate minority leader, uh, Chuck Schumer, had to say. The cloud hanging over this administration has just gotten a whole lot darker. Well, the president threatened Mr. Comey with the release of tapes of their conversation. It's awfully curious that no one from the president's team 
will either confirm or deny the existence of the tapes. President Trump, if you disagree with anything the director said today, play the tapes for all of America to hear or admit that there were no tapes. So what do you think, Tyson? Are we going to see any tapes? Is, that, is this going to go any further? I mean, it seems like if there are any tapes, there's one thing that the Democrats, Comey, and Trump agree on, which is that they should be released. Because, of course, this would clear up any kind of questions. We talk a lot about clouds these days. That would clear up any questions regarding the credibility of Trump versus Comey, the he said, he said kind of back and forth. Um, I, I can't make a determination of, as to whether or not there are tapes. Donald Trump tweets a lot. <laughs> um, it's hard to say. Okay, Tyson, thank you so much. Tyson Barker, a director and fellow at the Aspen Institute here in Berlin. Thank you so much for being with us this morning.